We're used to thinking of distance as looking out horizontally, maybe out towards the horizon. And that applies to many infrared imaging scenarios, but not all. I'm Stan Boynick, this is Ask an Expert, and today we're going to be talking about something called slant range. What is slant range? Slant range is simply the distance from a camera to an object being imaged, but it takes into account the possibility of the geometry of the two things being at different altitudes, such as the example where we might have a camera on an airborne platform looking at an object on the ground. Why is distance important in infrared imaging? When we design an infrared imaging system, we think about the field of view of the camera, and the distance to the object tells us how much of the field of view we're going to be able to see at that distance. Another factor related to that is a thing called instantaneous field of view. That's the field of view of a single pixel. We call it IFOV. And the IFOV at a given distance tells us how many pixels we will get on a certain object at that distance, and that tells us how well we'll be able to resolve that object at that distance. For more information on field of view and IFOV, see our Ask an Expert on the subject. Let's put all these concepts together in a real world scenario. Let's look at the slant range, the field of view, and the instantaneous field of view, or the IFOB. Here we've got an airborne platform that's looking over kind of an exaggerated size object. Uh, its altitude is one leg of the vertical right triangle, and the, that horizontal distance that I talked about at the beginning is the other leg of that right triangle. And the geometry of Pythagorean's theorem and so on tells us what that slant range is going to be in that case. Let's work this scenario with some simple numbers. I'm going to estimate that this aircraft is flying at about 5,000 feet, I'm going to simplify it by calling it 5K, and that its object is about a horizontal distance of 2,000 feet over here. That is a right triangle, and going back to our Pythagorean theorem and our geometry, we'll square A squared plus B squared, and we'll find the slant range C squared. So if we take 5 squared, that's 25, 2 squared is 4, that's 29, and then we have to take the square root of that, and I happen to know that the square root of that is about 5.4. Now remember, we're working in thousands of feet here, so that tells us that our slant range here is about 5,400 feet. That's the distance from our imager to the object. Now you'll notice in this example, the altitude and the slant range are very close to each other. That's because in this example, this aircraft is currently looking at a very high, very steep downward angle. And at those very steep angles, the slant range is going to be dominated by the altitude here. This is a gimbaled imager in, in, this, in this example, and so as it moves its imager up to a more shallow imaging angle, the slant range will become more dominated by the horizontal distance. The vertical distance still factors in, but you can imagine at a much shallower imaging angle, the horizontal distance becomes much more of a factor in that calculation. In summary, slant range is just the distance from the imager to the object, but it takes into account the geometry of the imager being up at an altitude instead of just looking horizontally across the ground. I'm Stan Boynick, and this has been Ask an Expert. Thanks for watching.